Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. The impact and the transformation that this ministry and the teaching is bringing in the lives of people we, we receive testimonies, thousands and thousands of testimonies um, from lives. But then every one of them come fresh. They come very fresh and really impactful. Um, when we begin to share, maybe one day we'll have the opportunity to share some of these testimonies. And you won't believe the encounters, the breakthroughs. There are whole churches that play koinonia messages and just sit down under that anointing and get blessed and there are all kinds of miracles that have happened to people liftings encounters you know i think one of the greatest testimonies is the encounter that people have through the messages angelic encounters heavenly encounters they step into levels of the anointing and some of them have never been here never been here there are people there are ministries there are pastors that travel kilometers to come and so i'm a bit concerned that we who are here that god has granted us the privilege to directly sit down under this very heavy unction i am a bit disturbed as to why the pace of our growth is a bit slow um, and I, I began to ask god because I care about us. I don't just care about myself. Left for me, I am, I am bent on walking with God and receiving testimonies from that relationship. But every true leader prides himself in the joy of the people. Hallelujah. If only the leaders succeed, we're the only ones getting blessed and prosperous and lifted and anointed, you know, and God is expanding and increasing our influence. Many leaders will rejoice at that, but my joy is to see that as we rise, everyone who sits under this anointing becomes a first-hand epistle of the vision. Hallelujah. So I'm a bit concerned. Honestly, I am. Um, not necessarily worried, but I began to ask the Lord because I know that the problem is not with the quality of the word. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we may not be the best, but I think we have done well in bringing the word of God in due season. So I, I really began to talk to the Lord about it. I expect 10 times the results that we see in our lives. There are people who are afar off, never seen me, not even my picture. Some of them have had just one message, just one encounter, just one. There are people who have just one koinonia message. Just one. Koinonia teachings are so powerful, it doesn't matter which of them you get. You produce the same thing. Even if it's on marriage and what you need is healing. It doesn't matter. Just get that atmosphere. Hallelujah. And so I, I really, I want us to take, we are, not, we are not playing games. Praise the Lord. This is a real ministry. We are very disciplined and serious with the assignment that God has given us. There is a revolution going on in this nation. 
And I can tell you with all humility that we are contributing significantly to the spiritual renaissance that God is doing, especially in the lives of the generations that are coming. I am humbled by those who have access to these teachings. I have met kings. I have met politicians. I have met nobles. I have met people who my level of life would never have afforded me to meet all on account of the grace of God and what he is doing. Praise the Lord. And I expect that um, those of us who are sitting down, please volume, directly under this anointing, we should be able to walk first hand. Many of us have access to me. There's counseling sessions. Even after the meeting, we can. Even if it's a handshake, a hug, whatever it is, you sit down directly under the worship, under the prayer, and all of that. And, and so, it is either one of two things. Number one, either you are not really interested in pursuing this reality of the divine life to be at work in you. Hallelujah. Either there is a direct negligence or there is creeping in subtly the danger of familiarity. Hallelujah. Familiarity is a disastrous thing. It has a way of destroying you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One time, Reverend Dr. Uma Pai shared a touching testimony many years ago. I heard him preach and he said that um, his brother and the brother's friend needed a miracle. And it was, it was a financial miracle. They really needed a miracle from God. And the brother went to him and said, um, can you give me some money? And he said, you're my brother. I can't deny it. And he gave him some money. But the friend came and said, man of God, I really need a miracle. And he prophesied and spoke to the person and said, your bands will never run dry. Two people, same need different results hallelujah there is if your life does not change under this unction i guarantee you something is wrong with your approach god is in this place hallelujah i was humbled by the testimony of our dear sister and um, it doesn't take too much to see the hand of god it just takes you being disciplined and follow instructions the problem with many of us is there is this spiritual stubbornness. You know what we call I too know mentality physically. See, it's a, it's a foolish thing when you don't have results in your life and you keep arguing with the words that come. Hallelujah. Have you seen students like that in class? Their CGPA is low. They are not doing well. Yet they argue with the lecturer again and again. And then those who are very serious, those who are exceptional, they sit down diligently. There is an attitude. Look, let me tell you. The ball is in your court. You have to choose. You see people changing. There are people who are changing. There are testimonies that are coming. You are the only one who is left. You can choose to argue it and watch sick people get healed and watch God change the story of people. Look at people oh my god look let me tell you if i begin to share with you some of these testimonies hallelujah very humbling testimonies of the hand of god hallelujah we are too small to doubt the might of god do you know how far god can take you brothers and sisters? forget about your age look if you want to receive from God, I'm speaking to especially many of us who are students, you must remove this student mentality and bury it and, and, and know that you are only a student for a few moments. Many of us, this dependency mentality has crippled us. You have graduated for five years now, but you still believe Koinonia is not a fellowship. Koinonia is an apostolic and a prophetic move of God. It's not some kind of campus thing for just young people. Hallelujah. Please be determined that there must be an evidence in your life. Hallelujah. There must be an evidence in your life, brothers and sisters. 
and this is this is my goal i cry before god every time i pray for us and i say lord please let your people even if it means not blessing me no problem status is changing there's no more decline i'm on my way to better days prophesy that's what must happen to you my status is changing there's no more decline i'm on my way to better days one more time prophesy to yourself status is changing there's no more decline i'm on my way to better days i'm on my way on my way on my way to better days prophesy you're on your way I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. To better day. To better day. To better day. Sing, status is changing. Come on. Status is changing. The word of God is doing no something to you. Decline. We're on our way. I'm on my way. To better day. There is a better tomorrow, I tell you. Forget about today. My status is changing. There's no more decline. We're on our way to better days. We're on our way. We're on our way. On our way. That's the destiny of this ministry. To better days, we're on our way. On our way, we're on our way. On our way. On our way. On our way. To better days, we're on our way. On our way. You can choose to take the flight or not. But I tell you, God is going somewhere with us. To better days. Prophesy to yourself. It's part of the meeting. We're on our way. That His glory will change something in your life. I'm on my way. To better days. To better days. To better days. To better days. We're on our way. On our way. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. Hear me. It doesn't take time. It just takes having access to the keys. It doesn't take a lot of stories and discussion. There is what you can hold on to. When you catch it, you have caught it. It will change your life. Men will talk. They will only talk for nonsense. You will only be moving like a star that cannot be stopped. But the question is, are you willing? It's not enough to just listen. There is no situation you are in that is the worst in the earth. There are people in a worse situation. But this word has taken them out of it and honored them. It may look like there is a delay. But you must tell yourself the glory of God is changing me. This is already a word for somebody tonight. You may not look like it. Brothers and sisters, forget about it. Your status is changing there's no more decline you're on your way to better days let them laugh at you today your status is changing your status is changing there's no more decline there's no more decline you're on your way you're on your way to better days prophesy to yourself my status is changing spiritually financially in every respect, no more I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way. 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 I'
to better day better day I'm on my way on my way I'm on my way to better day now pray and say Lord give me focus help me to settle with the world whatever distracts me whatever distracts me whatever is robbing my life i'm ready to be a student i'm ready to submit myself go ahead and pray i'm ready to lay down my pride to get what works i'm ready to submit myself i'm ready to lay down my pride i repent from arguing with the word give me the keys so oh god let my hands handle them. Pray. I lay down my pride. I lay down my pride. I submit to the word of God. I lay down every argument. Every vain talk. I submit to the word. I want to see results in my life. There is something I do not know. Show me, oh God. There is something that connects me to the next level. You are changing the life of others. Don't forget about me. I am willing. You are changing the life of others. I am willing. You are changing the story of others. I am willing. I take my eyes away from my failures. I take my eyes away from limitations. I take my eyes away from criticisms. I am not stiff-necked. I am not stubborn. I am malleable to your word. yes lord i submit to your word it has changed many it has produced champions and generals Like you to see your future and prophesy. I'm on my way. Oh, they will hear my voice. I'm on my way. They will see His glory upon my life. I'm on my way. To better days. To better days. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We submit to your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please pick up your Bible. First John chapter 5 verse 4. God bless you. Let's get straight to the word. There is a lot to talk about. First John 5 verse 4. Please pay attention. If you are here, sit down, sit down, sit down. God bless you. Please look up everyone before we read that scripture. I expect everyone coming for Koinonia to at least buy a book like this. Praise the Lord. All these pieces of papers we have that we throw powerful revelations on it. Get something like this. Please, pay attention. Just be a student for a while and let the world honor you. Forget about pride. Please, I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Young and old rich or poor, whatever you, when you come to the presence of God, just follow instructions. Your next dimension is in the instruction you follow. Hallelujah. Don't be too, don't do big manism before God. For the kingdom is for children. Get a notebook. Get a good biro. Don't 
come around if, if, if you have devices or phones that you can you can you know record and write very well do so don't just sit down and be careless when you are inviting others let them know that they are not just coming for fellowship hallelujah if you love them enough buy it and give them buy it there are lots of jotters that we get from wedding free huh Instead of writing your problems on it and writing all the people that hurt you, why don't you bring it, sow it as a seed to somebody? Get this. This is my own notebook. There are many others like this. It shows that you respect what God is teaching you. In the book of Revelation, when John saw everything, he told him, write. He didn't say, think about it. He didn't say, crime it. He said, write, for these words are faithful and true. When prophet Elisha was passing and the Shunammite woman perceived that this was a holy man of God, when they decorated his room, they kept a table for him there so that he would write. The ancient wrote, you must write. Hallelujah. Please, when you come, that's why we have time to say hug one another. When we say hug, hug. When we say sit down and listen, no loitering around, walking around, pinching this is is demonic it's not just bad it's demonic i'm telling you it is the spirit of distraction your mind cannot do too many things at once hallelujah when the word is coming that's when you remember that oh i i need to do this i need to do that somebody is pinging you, you are pinging the person it's demonic pay attention hallelujah please inside and outside even if you don't have a seat pay attention somebody is smiling and telling you have you seen their uniform tell the person please don't distract me i'm tired of my situation and my life must change don't distract me if you say it once you won't repeat it again but by the time you start entertaining nonsense in the middle of something powerful that should liberate you the person will say can you imagine was it a uh, that we've won, how much did you even say it? This is not the place to discuss all this for God's sake. Of course, we appreciate ourselves. But if you don't place value for the word, it will never change you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. First John chapter 5. You will thank me tomorrow. You may not like me today. But I love you too much to leave you the way you are. Many are already thanking me. And those who didn't listen are now listening in a painful way. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words be First John 5, verse 4. Everyone read is projected. One, two, read. And this is the victory that overcomes. What is it? Even replace our with my. Are you ready? Read it one more time. Even my faith. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 tells us that the just shall live by faith Hebrews 10 verse 38 media you have to really help us today let's see how we can rush I want us to finish on time Hebrews 10 38 it says the just shall live by faith in fact frankly speaking four times in scripture it is recorded that the just shall live by faith but I'll just speak to Hebrews 10 verse 38 Hallelujah. It says, now the just shall live by what? Faith. faith. But if any man draw back, draw back in what? In living by faith. It says, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. The just shall live. Let me interpret it for you. The quality of your life here on earth is dependent on your understanding of what faith is and how it works. And this is what I'm going to be teaching you tonight what faith is and how it works the operation the dynamics that's what i would have taught last week 
but I was away and, and the Holy Spirit told me, no, you must teach this. My people need to hear it because they need to understand not just what faith is, but how it works. True Bible faith that will produce results for you. Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 4. It personalizes it in a very powerful way. I love the prophet. He said, the just shall live by his faith. Not your neighbor's faith. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. It says, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live. By what? You will prosper by your understanding of faith. You will step into the anointing and the glory of God. The quality, the measure of the glory and the grace of God you will see in your life is dependent on faith. There are, there are free seats here. Please let it be a tradition from now that every time we begin the service, if there are people standing, some people should sit on their seats. There is a vacant seat here. There is another one that I see. I don't know why there should be those seats. There are people standing outside. Please, ushers, you should know that. Let's, let's occupy all the seats, please. Hallelujah. The just shall live by his faith. Everyone say, the quality of my life is dependent on my understanding of what faith is and how it works. One more time. Say, the quality of my life is dependent on my understanding of what faith is and how it works praise the lord the subject of faith is very important for the christian experience um there have been many teachings on faith many many teachings in fact it's been the core teaching in many christian circles but there are a lot of misunderstandings about the true operation of faith and i trust that god will help us to be able to balance it i want to go really straight to the point and that very very fast hallelujah it's not that our regular or popular teachings on faith are wrong but many teachings about faith please look up many teachings about faith are not complete faith is an equation Faith is a formula. Are you following me now? And the components must be complete for it to work. Here and there, different men of God, preachers, great men and women of God have caught certain dimensions of what faith is and how it works. But to be able to give it a very balanced scope such that it works for those who practice it is where the problem has been. Hallelujah. Let's look at a few, um, a few incomplete revelations of faith that have come to the body of Christ. Number one, or some corrections on the imbalances. Number one, it has been popularly taught that faith is believing. No, that's not it at all. Faith is not just believing. That's the point I want you to get. Be to believe is very important. It's part of the equation of faith. But it's not all there is to faith. You see that? For somebody straight up, this is your deliverance. Because you have been taught that faith is just believing. If you believe, that's all. No, sir. I can tell you this categorically. That's not the whole equation. Belief talks of conviction. Belief talks of persuasion. When you believe a thing, it means that you are convicted. It means that you are persuaded. But it does not mean it will produce for you. Please, let's understand that. Belief is part of the process of manifesting faith, but not all of it. It is part of it, but it is not all of it. Please get this revelation. Oh, I believe God, I believe God, I believe God. Wonderful. That's only a step. That's not everything. Many of us, innocent believers, have stopped there. Believing God is not enough. Belief talks of your conviction. It is part of the overall equation. 
but it is not all of it. Number two, faith is not just confession. Mm. Body of Christ. Faith is not just confession. I'm dictating it so that you will write. Confession is part of the process of manifesting faith, but not all of it. Please, you must get this. Confession. In the equation of faith, there is a point where confession comes in, but that is not all there is to Bible faith. See that? Many of us have been taught by well-meaning people through the years in our different Christian circles across this nation and for those listening outside of this nation and all of that, we've been taught that all there is to faith is just speak. When you speak it, you have it. No, sir. I tell you the truth from God's word and from this Bible. No, sir. It doesn't happen that way. Are you getting blessed? Hmm. So, faith is not just confession. You must realize this. If confession were all that there was to manifesting faith, I guarantee you there are people who would have been living like angels in the earth today because there are people who speak. I'm not against confession. There is a place. Remember in our teaching, spiritual laws. There is a place. Confession activates. There is a law of speech and sound. That's not the only law. So it is true that confession is part of the process of manifesting faith. But not all of it. So believing is not all of it. It's only part of it. Confession is not all of it. It's only part of it. Number three. Faith is not just sowing seeds. Faith is not just sowing seeds. Many in the body of Christ have been taught that faith is equal to seed sown. No, sir. Sowing of seeds is also part of the equation. It's activating the law of seed time and harvest. But that is not all there is. You see the imperfections. So when I camp around believing, on one side we have those who believe. Just believe. And if you really believe, it happens. That's not exactly true. Hallelujah. Or confess. And if you confess, that's all. No, that's not exactly true. Or sow seeds. The moment you are trusting God for a house, you sow a seed for that house and go and rest and it happens. No, sir. No, sir. There is an equation. God is not a fraud star. Are you getting my point? That, those kinds of attitudes make God look like a 419er. Right? And this is the reason why many people write against men of God in newspapers. They call us all kinds of things. They call us money mongers. They call us uh, metaphysical people. They call us talkatives because the incomplete teaching. See, let me tell you something. Especially for those of us who are men of God here or will be called into ministry. Realize that the church is an institution. Both a spiritual institution and a social institution we influence culture we shape people the mindset in nigeria has largely been altered through the church for good now are you getting me nigeria is said to be the most religious country in the whole world and this is because of the presence and the influence of the church there is a place that the church is playing in nation building and, and that, that puts a lot of pressure on the man of God. Because what that means is when you mislead people, it will create a ripple effect. Right? There are some of you, as you come and sit down under this anointing, as you hear the things I preach, you take them, some of you verbatim, back to your fellowships, your members, because you believe you want them to receive the same result. And that means I must be careful. If I teach you error, it becomes harder to correct it when it has left me. Are you seeing how error grows? Because when you go now and you are communicating to your churches or your groups or your fellowships, it may not be exactly as I said it. It will be based on what you understand. Right? By what I said. And so, the, the error keeps multiplying as it goes down the line. That's why we pray in the spirit for accuracy of utterance. So that we can communicate only that which is consistent with the mind of God. Are you blessed? So faith 
is not just believing. Never forget this. Number two, faith is not just confession. The word confess comes from the Hebrew word homologio. It means repeat as you have heard. So there is a place for that. The law of sound. The creative power of spoken words. But that's not all there is. Now I understand that there are times that we men of God take this aspect fragment by fragment. And, and I understand that. That's not what I'm talking about. There are people who have taken this in koinonia. We have examined all of these aspects in details one by one. And that is just for understanding. But when it comes to manifesting faith, you must be able to piece up all the fragments together. Are you getting my point now? To complete the equation. Otherwise, what you are doing is not Bible faith. Say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Faith is not just about sowing seeds. Otherwise, what difference do we have with those who just give charity around? There are unbelievers who sow cars, sow houses. Is that true? Faith is a law. Never forget this. Faith is a law, meaning it works anywhere it is accurately practiced. When it is released anywhere. A law is not something that is territorial necessarily. It's a principle that works anywhere it is diligently practiced. Salt is salt in Nigeria. Salt is salt in Bangladesh. Salt is salt in Israel. Salt is salt in Ukraine. Salt is salt in the Bahamas. Hallelujah. A gun is a gun in Nigeria. Right? A gun is a gun in Israel. What a gun can do in Nigeria, it can do in UK. That's how faith is. It's a law. So write very quickly. The principles of manifesting the faith that works. The principle of manifesting the faith that works. I'm being very simple tonight because I really want us to get this. This is very core and foundational to our understanding and our success in life. The principle of manifesting the faith that works. Let me have two people, please. Any two people? Come. Please watch this. Stand here, Benga. You stand here. Promise. Watch this. Why is faith very important in the life of the believer? I want you to watch these people. This is... Hold this. This is God wanting to reach out to man. This is the blessing. Watch this. This is the breakthrough. This is the healing. This is the prosperity. This is the new level of grace. This is the insight. Are you getting me? And here is man. God so designed it that there is between God, his desire to bless you and down at your end, your desire to receive. There is a law that connects that. That law is called faith. Are you getting me now? Faith is important because it is the biblical platform that authorizes God's power to come into your life. Faith is the platform that authorizes God's ability. My brother wants to see the power of God. And it's not like God's ability is crippled. Lord, I want prosperity. Lord, I want healing. Lord, I want a miracle. Take me to another level. I want to begin to have encounters in the spirit. This is it. This is it. Fully paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. Right? And this is another imbalance that preachers say. The fact that a thing has been paid for does not mean it comes to you automatically. Is that true? I can pay for something and tell you when you go to the supermarket, it's paid for. But that does not mean it has been delivered automatically. See that? Faith. Faith is what connects you. Watch this. This brother is standing desperate. Oh God, would you not change my situation? 10 years, 15 years, nothing has changed. He's born again. He believes in Jesus. He believes Jesus died. 
He's a tongue talker. Maybe he even pays tithe in church. So seeds. Confesses the word. But nothing is changing. Because this connection. Are you seeing it now? God is asking that you authorize him. There is a connection. Between the power of God. And where it is needed in this earth realm. Faith. Are we following now? Between you and that breakthrough is your ability to connect are you willing to authorize the hand of his majesty he wants to come make no mistakes about it god wants to reveal himself as a loving god the love of god compels him to want to bless us but the problem is that we have not been taught how to connect stretch your hands promise and connect this this is faith once you lay hold on this then there is, there's no limit again there are many of us, thank you very much, guys. God bless you. And I don't know what they were thinking about. They're thinking, they're always thinking in partition. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's why I gave the example from beginning so that your, your desires will not be disappointed. Praise the Lord. Could it be, brothers and sisters, that where you are, where your family is, is not just because the devil is so powerful. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not just because you may not be praying correctly, but maybe you have not been taught. There is nothing wrong in not knowing. The problem is when you are not willing to learn. Hallelujah. Faith is the platform. Never forget this. This is why we need faith. The platform that authorizes God's ability to be made manifest in a person's life. God needs an authorization to step into your life because he gave man willpower. When he said, let them have dominion, it became scripturally incorrect for God to interfere with man's life just like that. No. He needs an authorization. That's why the Bible says in the book of Revelations, it said, behold, I stand. And what? And what? This is God speaking. Why will he be knocking? Won't he just step in and say, I created you. Open that door whether you want it or not. No. Behold, I stand and knock. And I will keep knocking for as long as you are willing to open it. Tonight, may we authorize God to step into our lives. And he will see how small many situations are. Praise the Lord. Everybody say, the faith of God is at work in me. So what then is this equation of faith? How does it work? Now that we know that faith is not just, um, I would define faith at the end of the teaching, but that the workings of faith, we have little bits and pieces of it. So here and there we confess the word and we seem to have some consolation, but nothing major happens. Here and there we sow seeds, very good. But then that's not all there is. Here and there, we, we um, do what again? We are convicted. Oh Lord, I believe you. Are you not the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego? God says, yes, so oh, I am. Huh? Are you not the one that parted the Red Sea? God will say, of course. Why are you not parting my situation? And God says, allow me. Authorize me. Authorize me. That's why the Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for every outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. I repeat, the Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for every outcome of your life, meaning I don't do anything. All I have to do, after all, I was a sinner. You are the one who died for me. I didn't ask you. Now that you have died for me, make sure that everything goes well. Give me tea. Give me bread. Do everything for me. See that? And there is an imbalance of the grace message that if not careful, stretches to that limit where it tells you God should do everything for you. No, sir. There are two dimensions of grace. Let me say it very quickly. I've listened to a lot of great mess, grace messages by different men and women of God and I agree absolutely with them in many aspects. There may just be a need for some little adjustments here and there who's that what's wrong with her she's sick huh who brought her 
You came with her. Hold her now, protocol, and let her talk. Huh? Please hold the mother and let the lady come. Come, you. You can hold the mother. What's wrong? Her kidneys. Hold on, please. Where are you taking her? No. Bring her. It's a spirit. Bring her. It's not that she's restless and she wants to go out. It's the spirit. That's what happens to many people when they come for miracle service. Once I come up, you see them restless. They say, I'm going. It's a spirit. How long has this been? Huh? Can she talk? Mama, how are you? How long are you? Her brother, how long has this been? Her kidneys are what? Renal failure. Shika, you believe that Jesus will change all this? As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing. time come on sing imagine this where your mother Jesus don't cry don't cry in the name of Jesus the anointing is on all of you all three of you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit I cause this devil of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. I command brand new kidneys right now. Mommy, brand new kidneys in the name of Jesus. I cause that devil of infirmity. I see you in the spirit. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Renal failure, I cause you by the blood of the eternal covenant. I curse you. 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 Hallelujah. Mama, look at me. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am healed. I am. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am. I am. Look at me. Everybody leave her. Leave her alone. Come. Come. Help her. Come. Help her. Hold this please. Help her. That devil is a liar. Please put this in. Walk. Come. Leave her. Don't hold her. Just guide her. Come. Come. Just turn around. Turn around. Help her. Turn around. Come. Kidney failure. That devil. Is. Look at she's happy. Look at what is happening. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Come. That devil is a liar. Let her come. Let her come. Help her. Just guide her. Let her come. That devil is a liar. Lift your legs, mama. Go ahead. Lift your legs. 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 In the name of Jesus. Listen, this is witchcraft. Your mother would have died on Sunday. They would have told you this woman is dead. She would have slept like that and woken up. Because as I looked, I saw the spirit. And I was looking, I said, what is this? And they were carrying her out. Look, it's better for them to come and die here than to get up. We are not playing games. This just came to prove the teaching. I'm about to say some other things. You must believe. They, they believed God, but they didn't stop there. They would have stayed in Shika 
and this woman would have died because I see in a vision Sunday they would have said it's over. Huh? Don't cry, don't don't cry, gentlemen. In the name of Jesus, Mama, I assure you, you will come back and stand here to give your testimony. That wicked spirit that has been tormenting you, huh? Go and look. Has she been eating? She has not been eating because the Holy Ghost is ministering to me that Mama is hungry. Find something for her to eat. God bless you. Take her. Lift your hands and let's bless his name for one minute. Please sit down, sit down, sit down. Let's hurry up. Let's continue. Sorry about that. There is a spiritual strategy for manifesting faith. Just like we saw. I don't know how long our mother has been but in seconds you can authorize the power of God see I already sense the healing anointing so as you are listening to me if you are sick here this is always what happens because when once one miracle happens the water is stirred, right very important brothers and sisters listen it's not like these guys could not have prayed for mama there is nothing special about me this is what i want you to understand the goal i know some of you are saying i don't agree there's just listen to what i'm telling you you know you know as i preach i i discern your thoughts i know what you are agreeing with and what you are not agreeing with Hallelujah. The equation of faith. Let me give you an equation of faith that if you practice, I guarantee you are touching the integrity of the maker of heaven. You will be shocked at what your life will become. It will begin to produce immediate results for you. Immediate results. Hallelujah. Pray in tongues for one minute as we prepare to receive this. We are hurrying up. Please take it serious. Say, Lord, open my eyes. Don't just hear. Don't just look. See. Inside and outside. Pray in tongues. Participate. Open our eyes. We submit to you. Great Spirit of God. Open our eyes. And this is the faith that overcomes even our faith. This is number one. The faith of God that produces results in your life always starts with revelation. Bible faith, please hear me, always starts with revelation. You can never manifest true faith until there is a revelation. A revelation. The first piece of the equation of faith is revelation. And there are two dimensions to revelation. Please look up. The first is study. 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 And the second is meditation. You don't have revelation just by wishing. Study. It first starts by searching out. You cannot have faith in what you do not know. I love this baby. Come. Ah, she's afraid. She's going to run to her mother now. <laughs> May God bless. One, one of these days, our children will open the service for us. All of them will just hold the mic and blast in tongues for 10 minutes. Oh yes, many of them pray in tongues. 
at their age we didn't even know whether but but god is doing a lot of work in our children hallelujah praise the lord let's continue revelation so it starts with diligently searching everybody say diligently searching now the problem with many believers you cannot spend your life just reading newspapers chase magazines name them all those kinds of rubbish and expect to have bible faith even if there is a call where a man of god quickly shared something faith doesn't come that way brothers and sisters there is an investment you must make in studying the word look at me this is your promised land you must walk through it every time you read the bible it's like you are walking through your promised land to see what god has given you to see what has been apportioned to you so as i study this i see verily verily i say unto you he that believeth on me the works that i do he shall also do greater works than this as i study i begin to see if ye be willing and obedient you will eat the good of the land and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command thee this day right that you'll be exalted above all nations and these blessings will come upon you and overtake you are you getting my point when you are studying the bible imagine that you are walking around your land of promise when you study the bible you are seeing the things that have been paid for are you getting my point that cancer is killing you and you take the bible and you search and you see where he hung on that cross and he said it is finished but that has not entered you you are aware remember you are getting revelation and this is only the first part that's why i'm telling you what many people call faith is not faith so i begin to walk around the promised land like he told abraham he said from where thou art lift up your eyes and look eastward northward that's what you do when you begin to study it's like you are walking through your land of promise brothers and sisters you may be soaking gary just walk through the land you are you are no problem there is no stove to boil the indomie break it as you are eating walk walk you think i don't know how that thing works don't be fooled by what you see there is a testimony of the transition of faith see that i was sharing with a lady that once upon a time i used to buy bread and cut it and put granite there's a way you arrange it so that with every bite you know the whole surface area is covered you push it in you are not the first to do it so all that insult you've been insulting god you said look there are people who did not even have the bread right and god brought them out of it so he will, he will bring you up we just sang that our status is changing but it starts as i walk through the land of promise Everybody say the word of God is my land of promise. Say one more time, the word of God. I know tonight's teaching is very simple, but don't trivialize the power of it. The word of God is my land of promise. Ha! So I study, brothers and sisters. See, as I'm, I feel like just sitting down to start studying the Bible. As I'm just talking to you now. A weak person, a non-entity, nobody knows you. But when you walk through that land of promise, you are already engaging something. You may not understand. There's, I'm not denying the, look, I'm not denying the fact that you are in pain. Don't get me wrong. Faith does not deny what is happening. You see that? Aha. Uh -huh. So if I'm sick and I say, I have headache, it's not negative confession. No. Please. If you want to say you are well, say you are well. But if I'm sick and I tell you something is, is pinching me here, it's not lack of faith. Are you getting my point? Many of us have felt so guilty. We don't even know when you are serious, when you are saying the real thing or not. You say, bros, can we get 20 naira? I say, I'm rich. Say, no, no, no. The issue is, you know, if you don't want to say, okay, there's nothing exactly in the pocket. Please, don't feel embarrassed. Don't make it look like the word of God makes you a fool. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't just speak anyhow and then things change speaking is a law the bible says a curse causeless shall not stand are you getting what i'm saying 
So don't just say if I speak anyhow, whether I believe it or not, something happens. Be wise. That's why we are growing. Praise God. Study. So I walk through this thing. Look, let me tell you how I study. Let me show you how I study. I don't study foolishly. I study strategically. Everybody says strategically. My goal of studying the Bible is not to cram scriptures. There are real needs on ground. Cramming does very little in helping you produce results. I hope you are aware. You can cram Genesis to Revelation. The part you truly act out in faith is the part that works for you. Is that true? So, I write different aspects of my life that I want to see the glory of God revealed. I write ministry. I write my finances. Are you following me now? Different aspects. And I begin to walk through the garden of the Lord. My promised land. Finding out what God's idea. What are his promises? What is his? What does his word have to tell me about this? How far can I be anointed? To what limit? The problem is, you see the reason why the devil kills your word study life. Right? See, when the devil wants to destroy you, there are three things he just attacks. It's very easy. Number one, he kills your word life. Number two, he kills your prayer life. Number three, he kills your corporate fellowship life. When these three are dead, you are finished. It's as simple as that. Just three things. You want to go and study and all of a sudden that lukewarmness. Notice, ladies, you've read novels that are two times larger than this. But to read just three or four pages, that's to tell you there is a devil that does not want you to see something. Are you getting my point? I can give you a storybook and you can read. Many of you have gone to the library you have gone to different things. There are many people who in your place of work, you are given tasks that require you reading voluminous books and you do all of that within a week. But how come when it comes to studying this, you thought it's because the letters are small. You brought, you bought large letter edition. It's still, it's big. There, is a, there is a spirit. Hallelujah. Everybody says study. It starts there. Let me not deceive you, brothers and sisters. Faith is not cheap. If you understand this, you will respect everyone who walks by faith. True Bible faith starts the encounter of the word. When you study, you find the promises. When you find the promises, the next thing is meditation. Everybody say meditation. It's still part of getting to the point of revelation. I'm trying to break down how faith truly works. Say meditation. What is meditation? The word meditation as, as is it, not just to, to speak aloud. The word meditation is the process that makes a revelation become your own. You see that? Okay, now you are studying. He told Peter, for instance, cast your net to the right side. How does that story relate to your situation in Zaria? Meditation. Meditation begins to draw out the spirit of that word. It begins to personalize it. It's in the place of meditation that some of us even have encounters. Real encounters. While you are meditating under a heavy unction, you can sleep and then you have a dream. In that dream, you can have encounters. Some of you can see men of God. Some of you can see people. And that thing crystallizes your conviction. You get up and hold that scripture and say, I caught this. See that? When, when there is meditation, the end of it is conviction. The whole goal of revelation is to bring you to a point of conviction. Another word is persuasion. I'm showing you how Bible faith starts. Persuasion. Persuasion. If you are not persuaded, you cannot finish the equation. Because you will doubt on the way. So you must strengthen your persuasion before the journey begins. Hallelujah. You don't believe in tithing. You just did it because your pastor laughed at you and said, look, you have not been paying tithe. I'm, I'm watching those who are standing. 
I'm working in the same office with you. It's, it's me that pays your salary. Eh? And, and you get angry. And you get afraid. And so just to please your pastor, you just squeeze your envelope and frown and stand. And you lift it up. Let him see you. I'm dropping it now. You won't be blessed that way. That's mechanical. I never do things until I have the revelation for them. It's painful to do a thing without having the revelation. You'll be trying to copy others. And after wasting your time, you won't get their results. Don't be hasty in doing anything. Get a revelation. Hallelujah. Do you spend time meditating? Let me tell you, one of the greatest key to meditation is silence. Many of us are too noisy for the word of God to become alive in us. It's God speaking to us. There are times in the night, late in the night, I just carry a chair and I go outside and I just sit down. No noise. All the noise makers are asleep. And I just sit down. And I'm just praying in tongues. Thank you Lord Jesus. Sometimes I could just carry. Worship is not noise. You can have that faint atmosphere of worship. And you're just sitting down. All of a sudden. A scripture like an arrow. Will fire into your spirit. When you share it with somebody. You'll be disappointed that they don't jump at it the way you jump. Because it's a revelation to you. Have you ever shared a scripture with somebody and said, my goodness, my brother, you are slapping your head while you are talking. You say, ah, not last week's coin. On your and you live there so sad and disappointed. Don't be disappointed. They are life to those who find them. To those who find them. It has become your revelation. Now you are ready to move to the next level. Are we following now? So the equation starts with what? Number one is revelation. And under revelation, it takes study and meditation. When a revelation has truly entered your spirit, it will bring conviction. Listen, I've said it again and again and let me repeat it. Revelation is not knowing what God has said. That's study. Revelation is knowing what it takes to make it work in your life. Hmm. Number two, the second dimension... The moment conviction and persuasion is there, you believe it. That's where many of us stop. But that's not all there is. Let me shock you. The next dimension to the equation of faith is prayer. And I'll tell you why. It's not just acting. It's prayer. Listen to me. I'm telling you what works. Prayer. When you catch a revelation, the next thing is not to run. You will miss something major. This is where a lot of people miss it. Are you getting it now? When you catch a revelation, brothers and sisters, the next dimension is prayer. An investment praying in tongues. I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence of praying in tongues, real fluent spiritual tongues given by the Holy Ghost, contend for it. We are more than ready to minister to you here. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost has settled this issue of tongues or no tongues in the body of Christ. You are the only one who has not had the revelation. It's a done deal. It's a settled thing. The advantages of praying in the spirit is, is beyond any denominational barrier or whatever it is. What does prayer do to you? Two things. Prayer reveals the strategy. Kabbalah katabala. It's not enough to know what God wants to do. There is always what you must do to commit God. Prayer is where you get the strategy. Hear me. It is not every place in scripture where the condition is verbatim. There are some situations that are customized to you. Let me give you an instance. You now read how Jesus healed blind Bartimaeus, Right? Or how God opened the womb of Anna. I'm a, okay, well, I'm not a woman. I wanted to use an example. Of... <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, but imagine that there is a woman who is buried, unable to take in, and now she begins to meditate, seeing the ministry of fruitfulness all in the Bible, all the scriptures that God has placed for fruitfulness, and all the barren women in the Bible who God opened their womb. She's studying, and in it, she begins to find spiritual keys. Are you getting my point? What they did. 
it does not mean you just you can stand up your situation may not afford you the opportunity to do exactly what they did for instance some people left to jericho where is your own jericho that are you getting me it is in the place of prayer the holy ghost gives you your customized strategy are you getting my point two things happen in prayer we are we are a praying ministry see you must be a man of prayer to appreciate what i'm saying if you don't pray it won't make sense to you as you begin to pray the strategy comes you can't obey until the instruction comes are you getting my point strategy so i begin to pray lord in the name of jesus a crowd is packing full here how are we going to get another venue and i'm praying humanly speaking there may not be another venue lord we thank you what are you saying and i begin to study the wilderness ministry of jesus how did they manage the crowds what did they do but we are not in the wilderness so i need a rema are you getting my point prayer is what brings the spirit of the revelation and then you will hear a word for you sometimes you can be praying it is in the place of prayer that you get the customized revelation and then two things happen number one i told you you get the strategy or the instruction the second thing is you receive the grace supplied for obedience you can never obey god until grace is given to you because some of the instructions that you will get from the place of prayer will be too hard some of the instructions may be empty your account some of the instructions may be pray all through the night is someone getting what i'm saying some of the instructions may be make sure you come and buy water here for three weeks. All kinds of instructions. That's why he not only gives you strategy, he releases the grace. Many people try to obey without the grace. This is the two-part dimension of grace that I want to explain to you. There is the dimension of grace that brings you into the finished work of Christ. And there is the dimension of grace supplied to you to obey, to actualize it. Right? It has been paid for, but you need grace to ensure its delivery. Someone's situation is changing. So you see that you prayed, you believed it. Oh, a job is coming. I found that revelation where Jesus, the, the master, told them, he said, why sittest thou idle? You see, you have to search. Lord, I'm jobless. Uncle, give me a job. You will, you will be frustrated forever. All those uncle and t thing. Many of us have never paid attention to this other option. You just hear it. But why don't you go back to the word of God? Lord, I don't have a job. Holy Spirit, guide me. And all of a sudden, the spirit of God, who, who searches the mind of God, begins to reveal to you. And you find that parable, for instance. You find the parable where Jesus was sending people into the vineyard. Is that true? And he met some people and said, why sittest thou idle? Is that not a scripture now that relates to your situation? True study. There are Bible concordances. There are Greek and Hebrew Bibles. There is Bible gateway. There are many Bible softwares that ease your search. Huh? Scriptures on joblessness. Google. Enter. And scriptures come out. No, no, no. Look, don't laugh. Except you don't want a job. And you bring them out. Some may make sense, some may not make sense. Just scan them. And you find, you don't need plenty. It may just be one. And now you are getting that scripture. Watch this. When you get that scripture, you meditate. Lord, open my eyes. What made the master to call them? Was there anything on their part that they did? Is there something in between the line in this story that my eyes has not seen? hallelujah and you get it so god is able you see the might the revelation of the might of god begins to down on you if god gave these people jobs and he paid them salary it means i can get a job and they will pay me salary and you begin to pray the moment you begin to pray don't just get up and act and say yes i've caught it application i hereby write for a job in this company you must give me what grace is sponsoring that 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 religiosity that's religion that's why you open the office and they'll say what are you saying you say i want a job you say walk out of here do you think 
and you and you now live disappointed you went with a lot of zeal God is good he has done me well and, and now you are there and, and you are disappointed because you did not finish the equation of faith are you hearing what I'm saying the next thing you would have done is to take that revelation to the place of prayer the threshing floor where your customized unique instruction is given somebody's breakthrough is already happening to him because God is showing you the missing link it will work and then I begin to pray this is how I do with koinonia messages I play the messages and while the messages are playing because there are some things that I said by the Holy Ghost the man of God is preaching and Joshua Selman is listening to him and while he's preaching and praying and I just hear something once you hear it you are ready to act because the moment an instruction comes that instruction can still refer you back to the Bible right it doesn't just mean that you see an angel with wings. You can hear it and then an instruction will come. You can be praying and say, Lord, change my situation. As I go for koinonia, change my situation. And while you are praying, Lord, I believe you will change my life tonight. And while you are praying, a scripture just come. Jesus told the lepers, go and show yourself to the priest. You see that? That's a revelation that would have not made sense in a normal day. But to you, it is God's rema to you. And the Bible says, as they went. What, what does that mean? It means you should stand up and go. See that? And as you go, you commit the integrity of God to perform. So prayer reveals the strategy and it also supplies grace. Because there are some instructions, especially financial instructions. Some of you, you, have not, you are not givers. That's why it, 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 you don't get... There are some people here who are reckless givers. If you are a true giver, you know that you need grace. It's called giving grace. Because you are crying and saying, Lord, change my situation. Lord, I leave this 10,000. Something must happen. I don't have an uncle. I don't have an auntie. My father is dead. My mother is dead. I don't have anybody. I didn't have the opportunity to go to school. You are the only one I have. And Lord, if you do not help me, I have seen in the word of God that these are the situations and God says, take now thy Isaac, that son. Are you a fool? You are about to go and use that money and at least even buy a Bible with it. And God says, I know it's a Bible you want to buy. Forward match. Sometimes God can tell you to go and sow it into the life of somebody you don't love. You can't pretend you didn't hear it. See that? But in that instruction, you are now ready to obey. That's the last final phase of the equation of faith. Prompt and complete obedience. Please write. Number one is revelation. Number two is prayer. Number three is prompt and complete obedience. Having all readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Prompt and complete obedience. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Please let's hurry up. Let me tell you something brothers and sisters. This is the hardest part of the equation of faith. Settling down to study is not the hard part. This is the labor dimension of faith. Are you getting me? This is where you labor in the spirit. It says if ye be what? And not willing and desirous, not willing and hungry. If ye be willing, revelation makes you willing. But obedience, the hardest part, this is the link, brothers and sisters, this is the consummation of the faith equation. No matter what else you do that you call faith, if you do not obey, it is not called faith. Hallelujah. Confession. Sowing of seeds. Only become potent. When we are willing to obey. When we are willing to obey. Everybody say obedience. I have found out. That this is the link. Between where you are. And where you need to go. Brothers and sisters. Obedience is not child's play. Obedience is hard work. 
that's why you must receive the grace in the place of prayer lord i know you are about to speak and i cannot pretend that i'm not hearing you so grant me the grace that when the instructions come may they not be too heavy yes 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 that's all i'll say to him yes yes your link to the next level yes. when you hear that instruction yes. it means your season is about to change a guarantee listen your obedience is what judges the devil obedience obedience oh I feel the anointing of the spirit I'll hurry up so that we will pray brothers and sisters obedience obedience we are going to look at one case study and then we'll support you with a few Isaiah 51 please quickly 1 and 2 let's hurry up Isaiah 51 Let's look at a man who from the Bible is called the epitome of faith. Isaiah 51. Hallelujah, verse 2. Everyone read. It says, look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone and blessed him and I increased him. That means God is giving you a case study. He say now that you know what faith is look at a biblical portrait on that study his life and you will find therein the keys so let's study abraham genesis 22 quickly please our first case study is abraham how did god turn an idol worshiper a mediocre in a small land called the awe of the chaldeans how did he become so prosperous how did he become the father of faith Hallelujah. Verse 2. It says, and he said, watch this. Okay, let's go to 12, verse 1 and 2, then we'll come back to 22. Genesis 12 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible, do you know that the person who was supposed to carry this, this fatherly mantle was his father, Terah? It was not Abraham. Terah missed it through disobedience. And the Bible says, now the Lord had said unto Abraham, get thee out of what? Are you seeing now? So we see that an instruction came. What was the instruction? Get out. Don't ask questions. Just move. He says, get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred father's house, unto a land that I will show you. He said, if you do this, here's the result. I will make of thee. Many times we cut the part of the scripture and just start claiming, I will. no, there was an instruction. Faith is a response to an instruction hmm. and i will make of thee a great nation i will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing next verse verse three now help us media in jesus name please walk together we have to really rush okay no problem and then he finished all the blessings. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee. And in thee shall the families of the earth be blessed. When will that happen? When will that happen? What was the first instruction? Get out. Abraham would have remained there and he would have died an idol worshiper at the awe, at awe of the Chaldeans. He got up and began to move. Go to verse 13. Chapter 13, sorry. Chapter 13, not. 
chapter 13 from verse 1. And Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot went with him into the south. Abraham took a step and he started moving. Lord said, I'm going with you. For joining in the obedience alone, the man became blessed. Are you getting me now? Lot was not part of the covenant. Like Ruth held on to who? Naomi. She was not supposed to be part of the lineage. She said, no way. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, prophet, thank you. I'm, I'm leaving. Ruth said, no way. Your obedience is my Whatever you do, I will. 22 verse 1. Here was a test. The instruction was going to come for that promise to become real. At this point, Abraham had begun to experience some, some kinds of things. Liftings and all of that. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt. The word tempt there is test. Abraham and said unto him, Abraham and he said, Behold, here I am. Verse 2. And he said what? Take your son. We are understudying Abraham. Abraham did not just carry Isaac. He would have slaughtered his son for nothing with no blessing attached. You move as instructed, not as you wish. Either instructed by the voice of the spirit or the principles of the word. It's still the same. We have been taking steps out of our wishes and not out of the voice of God. It says, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a bond offering upon one of the mountains, which I'll show you. Verse 3, may that be your testimony. Read the first line. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Everybody say prompt obedience. Delayed disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience in a measure. When God speaks to you, stand up. The moment you sit down there, that grace gets exhausted and you find out you no longer can stand up. God told you to sow the seed. At that point, because it was in the place of prayer, you could do it. He said, wait, later on. When you came, you now calculated how much? 120. Kai! What did I hear like this? In the morning, you even said it's even 200 I will give. But something has happened. See that? Or go and lay your hands on the woman in Shika. And he said, in the name of Jesus, I'm going. I know that they are used to seeing me just as a brother, but I'm going as instructed. And later on, you just say, let me quickly just go and greet uh, Benga and see whether he has prepared lunch. After the lunch and everything, you get up and your mind starts telling you, you self, they have already called you stupid even before you behave stupid. Now, by the time you go to the hospital, what if they drive you? What if something happens to the car? I say, oh Lord, I'll just intercede. After all, it's, it will soon be time for prayers. You see, the, the beauty of grace is you take advantage of it immediately. The grace for obedience must be maximized promptly. He rose up early. There is a reason why the Bible tells us that. Remember, we're understudying Abraham. He rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and so on and so on and so forth. Uh, let's go to verse 5. Verse 5. Okay, verse 7. He said, and Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father and said, my father, and he said, here I am. He said, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb? The son didn't know he was the lamb. Next verse, please. Let's hurry up. And Abraham said, my God shall provide a lamb for his bond offering. So they went up together. Verse 9. And they came to a place which God had done this and that and that. And he bound Isaac. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth. Makalabo kataya. His obedience was about to be complete. Do you know if he did not leave that knife, everything he has done is multiplied by zero. It's painful when you start your obedience and stop. You've paid too much price. Why don't you finish it and, and commit God's integrity? Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Verse 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, lay not thy hand on the lad, neither do thou anything to him. He said, for now. See that? For when? Not when you left your house. 
Not when you were at the base of the mountain. For now, I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son. In other words, you obeyed me even unto death. The blessing follows. 13. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and beheld a ram caught by the thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it at a burnt offering instead of his son. 14. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. Are you seeing that now? Jehovah Jireh, you are singing it. Jehovah Jireh. Uh -uh. Don't just sing. What did he do that made that a revelation? My God shall supply all my needs. True. According to his riches in glory. But according to your obedience to the instructions that will bring that riches. 15. And the angel of the Lord called out of Abraham called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said by myself come on now this is God stepping in when your equation is complete Satan was not mentioned here it was a deal between God and he said by myself I have sworn because thou hast done done not said not confess oh I will kill Isaac in the name of Jesus Isaac you are dead in fact it's not that you are dying you are dead it's nonsense if there is no obedience he said, and has not withheld thy son. 17. He said that in blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply you. As, the, as, as thy seed, as the stars of heaven. And as the sun which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall what? Possess the gates of thy enemy. Please, I want you to make up your mind beginning from today. That obedience will become the watchword of your life. This is Bible faith. Obedience. In Joshua chapter 6, just write it. I will not need to go there. The walls of Jericho. I want to show you. In fact, when you go to Hebrews 11, the Bible begins to give us the archives of men who did exploit with what we know called faith. And you find out that for all of them, there may be variations here and there. But one common thing is that they all took steps when a word came. They took steps. Jericho. In Joshua chapter 1, the Lord began to speak to Joshua. He said, as I was with my servant Moses, so I will be with you. Right? He said, only don't be afraid, be courageous and so on and so forth. And, and you know, he looked at all of them. Now watch this. God had told him he had given him Jericho. But if they just went, do you know they would have killed them? Please learn this. Never obey. Just try to obey without prayer. Involve God. You will get the unique instructions. That's where the power lies. In the word. In the instruction. Hallelujah. When Joshua went to pray in the night, what happened? The strategy was revealed to him. So on one side, you will take Jericho. But there is a strategy. It's a strategy that was never used in the Bible for anything again. It came as a rema. And he told him, he said, walk around. That's the strategy. You walk around today and it may not walk until it is a rema. But he walked around. Seven times, right? And on the seventh day, he went seven times. And he said, now, Tehila, let there be a shout. That was a strategy. Other times, he told Jehoshaphat, he said, put the worshippers in front. And let them begin to sing and say you are good and your mercies endure forever. That's the strategy. For you, your strategy may be come for counseling. God can tell you there is an anointing you will receive and it will change your life. Write your name for counseling. Even if there is nothing, just come. That's a strategy. For someone else, the Lord will say go on a three-day fast. In the three-day fast, I will speak to you and you will catch a light. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you see that many of the things we call faith is not faith. It's not faith. It's just metaphysics. The widow in Zarephath, 1 Kings 17 from verse 7 to 16. Just write it. will not turn there for time's sake. Remember what happened. God commanded Elijah to go to Zarephath. There he will meet a widow. And watch this. He came and he met a woman in a state of lack and insufficiency. She needed to put her faith to work. But she could not put her faith to work until a word would come. And the prophet said, bring me water. 
The woman would have said, water for what? Water for what? And she took the water and as she was bringing it, he said, also bring me a morsel of bread. And she said, honestly, sir, this instruction is so much. He said, just do this. And the Bible says when she obeyed, her faith was released and she saw the supply. Are you seeing in scripture that all through the hallmark of faith is obedience? In my opinion, there is one word for faith, obedience. That's it. One word, obedience. If you do not obey the word, forget about the manifestation. When we're about to start Koinonia, I went to the Lord because the Lord had shown me in a vision. But where I saw in a vision, I could not relate with any physical place. And then I was, my mind had a lot of options here and there. But I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, I know that you are able to do this. All I need is a strategy. And I was praying, praying in the spirit, just lying down and worshiping. And all of a sudden, I had CGC. The Lord spoke to me. And I said, Lord, I don't even know the people here. How are we going to get access to the place? And the Lord told me, I've gone before you. You see, you don't need to do anything. Just stay there. The word has come. And see where we are today. The product of faith. It will work any day. It will work any time. One time I was praying and I said, Lord, how do we do now? There are sick people and your people need to be equipped. And the Lord said, turn the last Friday of every month to become a special time to minister to the people. When the counseling was getting too much, every day I said, Lord, what is, what is this strategy? And first we had moved to Saturday. And then the Lord helped us to arrive. Who does counseling on Monday by 11 o'clock? Does that make sense to you? But that's what God said. Look, brothers and sisters, if he speaks, start moving. Let your mind understand later on. Are you getting what I'm saying? Look at Jesus. I love Jesus. Jesus looks at a man who is blind. Sir, I am blind. And then Jesus makes mud. Right? Puts in his eyes and says, go and wash. Go and wash. Go and wash. I'm blind. If I could see, would I come to you? They let me. He didn't say, neighbors, take him to go and wash. He said, find your way there. Same thing Elisha told Naaman. Go and bath. See, you can choose to be arrogant about it or you can humble yourself and enter that water seven times and change your story now man said but then no rivers the, the, the servant said i'm walking with you soon i will leave you please you better be healed so that this thing will be better for us you are a liability to me this and that and that go and bath and he went watch this he went and started obeying but nothing happened till his obedience was complete. Six times he would have gotten up and just gone with mud like a fool. A man who brought victory. Right? He would have just moved and would say, Ah, captain, where are you from? He said, well, One stupid prophet gave me an instruction. After six times I said, Come on, my pride will not allow me. Many of you started obeying. One step to see the hand of God, the devil brought you back. And look, nothing happened. One step. Some of you came for miracle service, for instance, and we said, In the name of Jesus, you shout that name, Jesus, and you just stood and said, I beg, there is. People were just shouting like fools, and you were there. And said, ah, everybody was getting blessed, getting healed. Instructions. Instructions. The secret of true faith. When you get that word, obey. The truth is, we have not been obedient enough. And this is why we've not been seeing it. Look at the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and did what? The bread did not multiply in the hands of Jesus. Did it? No, sir. He gave them. He said, go and start sharing. Go and start sharing. Look at the 10 lepers. He told them, he said, go and show yourself to the priest. And they went at that word. The Bible says, as they went. Not before, as they went. He says, this sign shall follow, not go before. You have to take steps. A miracle always comes, or the miracle always comes, after the instruction or condition is met. Never forget this. The miracle always comes after the instruction has been obeyed. Fully.
Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your ways. Oh, oh yes, Lord. I will obey. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your ways. Paul is defined as the action you take. Right, we're concluding. Faith is defined as the action you take based on your conviction of God's word and in line with the instructions required by God. Right. Faith is the action you take not the desire to act the very action you take based on your conviction of god's word and in line with the conditions or instructions required by god if you do that you have manifested what the bible calls bible faith otherwise you will just be playing games and talking games I told the Lord, whatever you demand of me, I will do. I was in Abuja and um, one of my very nice shoes that I love, I was polishing the thing to package it and the Lord told me, this shoe goes for so, so, so person. Someone sowed a very major seed into my life and as soon as I received it, God said, now you are an usher, pass it to so, so, so person. Years ago, I would have cried, but I've grown. Mm. Because every time his instruction comes, that's my status changing. That's it changing. Hallelujah. Last year, when we were starting Koinonia, the Lord said we should carry all the seed in the house and sow everything. Everything. The whole money. I told the finance department, I said the Lord has given an instruction. Pack everything. If God has told you you will marry a man of God, start praying for grace. Don't just say when. Pray for grace. Because you are, the man himself is, is enough to be a ministry for you. A true man of God is strange. Right? You wake up and see a man roaming like a zombie in your room. Speak, Lord, I'm listening. Honey, what's going on? I'm okay, it's alright. And you are wondering whether you are the one who is going as a sacrifice or not. Listen, you will never receive breakthrough beyond the level of your last obedience. Never, never, never. Don't reject the instructions of God. Every time you search the Bible, look for conditions, not just promises alone. What are the conditions tied to them? Hallelujah. I sowed that seed and in less than two hours more than 1,000% of that seed came into my life. Hallelujah. Crazy instructions that God has given me. Crazy instructions. I remember when I traveled to Canaan land as the instruction of the Lord. I went with a seed and I went there when I was done outside in the public, not in one small corner. The Lord told me, go on your knees on that ground. And I went down there. I've shared the story. You know about it. I've shared with you how the Lord instructed me to give everything. Everything. Hallelujah. I carried my Isaac. Dragged it into the church. And came and placed it on the altar like a fool. Don't want any man's glory until you can obey the instructions he obeyed. What you need to pray for is Lord grace there was a time the Lord instructed me I locked myself for three days non-stop my eyes did not see the sun did not see the sun because the Lord said so no sun no food no nothing the only thing that I did was to take my bath and that was because the bathroom was inside the room where I stayed no nothing are you willing to obey if 
ye be willing and obedient you will eat the good of the land hallelujah i told you about how i trekked from the roundabout in pz right at the instruction of the lord the roundabout in pz i trekked to aviation praying in tongues I take this city. The keys of this city is given unto me. Don't you sit down and see people coming and think it's just because I'm a young man. It's not charm. When you obey him, his integrity is committed. Who is God speaking to tonight? Stop grumbling and complaining. Cry and say, Lord, what is the word for the next level? Because if he gives you that word, you will rise to that. Hallelujah. I remember someone who one time his father was sick and he played an instrument for from night the lord gave him an instruction to play an instrument from about 10 till about 6 in the morning he said just play that instrument non-stop and that guy was worshiping by the morning the father was healed look at me the arm of the lord is not too short koinonia are you hearing me there are pastors there are people we like miracles but we hate instructions we hate instructions. My life moves at the pace of the instructions of the Lord. Instructions of the Lord. I think it was yesterday or day before yesterday. I saw one suit that I like. New suit. They just showed it to me. And the Lord showed me the face of someone in protocol. Ah! I said, oh God, this is going. I called him immediately. I said, where are you? I said, come quickly. This is for you. And he came. And I gave you was surprised. I said, Baba, before any unbelief will enter, and I'll collect my team back. Go. I love you, Jesus. That was from the spirit. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Oh, it takes faith to move mountains, brothers and sisters. I love you, Jesus. There is no instruction I will not obey. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Listen. It says, through faith, they subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They shut the mouths of lions. He said, what more can I say? For time will fail me to speak to you about Gideon and Barak and Jephthah. Ordinary men who obey God to the latter. Sister, when you obey God, that man must come. It doesn't matter where he is. Forget about witches and wizards. Concentrate on your obedience. Concentrate. There are some of you, God told you, Drag your family members and bring them here. The word came with the grace for it to happen. You say, Master, we have toiled all night. There are times God can use a man to speak to you. They tell you, go and listen to relationship and family life. I've listened to it before. No, no. Remember, you are responding to a word. Don't forget. He may tell you to do what you have always done. But this time around, there is an anointing upon it. You will do it and see very seemingly crazy instructions. God can tell you, just sit down on these drums. And just be playing and clashing the cymbal and praying in tongues. Do it. Do it. If you are ashamed of men, forget about greatness. You will never carry certain levels of the anointing. I went for six hours in Joss, standing at the Renhard Bonke Kuse because I was desperate. And, and I set my gaze on that man because there was something I wanted to land on. I was not sitting down asking stupid questions that people ask when they go to places. Ah, this, man, this white man, why is he wasting our time? Is there Rema or no Rema? That was not my, I was at my, my, my face was set like a flint. Brothers and sisters, listen. Wait, the financial prosperity series I'm about to preach, I truly believe it will cause a revolution. There are new things that the Lord has shown me that I put my hand on my head. I say, my goodness, Joshua Selman, where have you been? Your life must change. We're in the season of the rain. Obedience is the platform. Don't blame anybody. Take responsibility. 
There are only three prayer points tonight we are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. Sorry about the time. We are really working on beating the time. But I want you to pray. Begin to thank God for the word tonight. Begin to thank him for the word tonight. It's time for new levels of grace. New fountains. New levels of impact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray. Prayer point number one. Lord, help me and give me a receptive spirit to hear your instructions and to see your conditions as demanded by scripture. Lift your voice. Please pray seriously. This is the time to pray and not walk around inside and outside. Let our spirits be open, O oh God. That as we study, may we see instructions. May we not just see promises, but conditions. Your level is changing, I tell you. Your level is changing, I tell you. God is not a man that you should lie. He's not the son of man that you should repent. Lord, I receive a receptive spirit. I receive a receptive spirit. I receive a receptive spirit. I'm receptive to your instruction. Bretes <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen. There are conditions tied to you walking in divine health. There are conditions tied to influence and increase and honor. There are conditions tied to prosperity. There are conditions tied to longevity. Find out. We have preached these things. Our messages are full of these keys. Prayer point number two. Lord Jesus, speak to me. Speak to me. I'm ready to obey. Speak to me. Let your word supply grace. Reveal the strategy. Pray. Show me the key to the next level of breakthrough. To the next level of influence, to the next level of encounter, to the next level of the anointing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number three. I want you to pray this with all your heart. Cry for a fresh supply of grace for prompt and complete obedience. 
Some of you, God has given you instructions. There are seeds to sow. There are places to go. There are tapes to listen to. There are encounters. There are retreats to have. You have not obeyed, so you will never see his glory. Lift your voice and cry. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. Hallelujah. Watch this. It is after you obey that you can now begin to confess. And then you can now sow a seed and tie a seed to it. Except if the sowing of the seed is the instruction. Or that if I'm believing God say for a house. And I find out. God gives me an instruction. Go and get an architectural design and see the kind of house you want. That's an instruction. Don't sit down and start giving foolish arguments. Now I go and I say Lord I found what I wanted. God will say go and estimate. How much will it cost? Now you, you estimate and you say it will cost 15 million. <laughs> You are sitting down. All you have home and abroad is 500 naira. Forget about it. And look, the blessing is in the instruction. It's not in what you have. Whether, you, you, whether it is 1,000 or 1 billion, it is still faith that will bring it. Hallelujah. And now you begin to pray. And while you pray, God will say, relax. He said, don't worry. Just relax. It will come as a seed. You have heard the word. You stand still. And you begin to prophesy. Or God will say, now go and sow a seed for it. Or you want to get married, for instance. And, and, and you are praying and you are thanking God. You are saying, Lord, thank you for this. And then you find out God gives you an instruction in the place of prayer. Maybe go and wash the plate. Go to one woman who is already married. He may even be your friend. He said, just go on a Saturday and help them sweep and wash their plate. That's the instruction. If you are too ashamed to do it, forget about marriage. It may be crazy. But go and do it. After you have done that, then you can now begin to prophesy. And you can now connect with a seed. And say, Lord, I sow a seed into this. And I speak. My marriage is coming. The man that God is bringing, like our sister said, is a blessed man. He's a godly man. Your obedience is complete. Something is wrong with your family. Your husband or your wife is misbehaving. And all of that. You don't sit there and say, me and you will enter the same trouser. What has entering the same trouser got to do with, with the solution? You don't need to enter the same trouser. You need a word from God. All these stupid cultural things that we put, we must enter the same trouser. And do what? Is it going to solve the problem? Get a word from God. Where you are confused, come for counsel. This is the situation. What do you think? What is the, what is the scriptural mystery? What is the principle? That is responsible for the delivery of this. Right? That's why we pray. That's why we come here all the time. We are dispensing mysteries. As these mysteries are dispensed. It's falling on different people. You catch it and you walk with it. It has changed the lives of people from nothing. It has taken people to wherever they will go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very fearful and touching testimony. A gentleman listen to my message he's been following my teachings and he's been listening to my messages and they are trusting god he's a real estate person he's trusting god for breakthroughs and all of that and then a miracle just happened to him within a short time they gave him 60 hectares of land to develop and sell his profit from that is 300 million he's a young man like me the word as if that will finish when i when i got to abuja he made sure every time i go to abuja he makes sure he's the one driving me around he said I must drive you the last time I went he said they gave him another 40 hectares making 100 hectares what is it that God cannot do your obedience are you hearing what I'm saying 
your obedience your obedience your obedience i hear a lot of testimonies testimonies you were i think many of us have, have we've heard about the testimony of the woman who for eight years was barren selena's auntie or so and this woman supernaturally by acting the word of god had triplets they are all alive today triplets to recover for the eight years what is it that god cannot do don't come we say right prayer request is when you are here that you just scrabble in what is even your own you are just playing games with god that's why very few people get testimonies change your attitude from today let it not be Friday by five. You say it's time for koinonia. Be intentional about it. There are people who come in for miracle service. We all fast on Thursdays. But on Friday, they, they prepare. When I'm coming for koinonia, it's as if, do you know, you see me sit down sometimes here. My body is shaking. I'm just waiting for worship to finish. Testimonies when people are shouting, you see, there's answer. I want to just dispense what God has brought. But there are people who just sit down. You bring a teaspoon and you want you want to have an ocean of blessings. Enlarge your capacity. Listen. Refuse to walk back to your seat. Refuse to walk back to your seat with that sickness. As I look at you, the Lord is revealing people's cases. I see ladies' infections. I see tumor lump in the breast. God is touching this lady right now that is putting her hand on her face. Take it now. Hallelujah. I'm seeing HIV. I see a number of HIV here. Hepatitis. There are men here that have all some challenges. Low sperm counts, infertility whatever kind of nonsense some of you have a woman here i'm seeing palpitations sometimes you gasp for breath who is that person you madam god is visiting you you're not the only person please make sure you write a request this is not a ritual hezekiah took the prayer request and took it to the temple and dropped it before god hallelujah now all you need please Except if the, the ministers ask you what the situation is. Otherwise, just a touch. I tell you the truth. Just a touch. The worship team sang it. Just a touch. For some of you to be like magic. One moment is there. Another moment is gone. I'm seeing somebody that coughs. And you cough out sputum sometimes like blood. Your throat is dry. Sometimes you cough out blood. SS. I'm seeing a number of SS. People who need genotype change. I'm sure you've been hearing the testimonies. You don't have to remain. Where you are. Hallelujah. Jesus. You are the great healer. As we pray for you, go back to your seat so that those who are outside can come. It's called a miracle service. Lord Jesus, you revealed mighty miracles to me in the visions that you showed. Let there be a mighty confirmation in the name of Jesus. Pastor Jakes, Pastor Williams. Now, we're going to pray. Please, let's pray ourselves. Someone take here. Someone take there. Jakes, you can start there. Pastor Williams here. As we lay hands on you, check. Do what you couldn't do return back if you need test sorry we don't have a medical team yet to do instant tests for people but then i want you to know you will return rejoicing you will return rejoicing worship team are you ready you give us that song something's changing where's sam god is visiting man In the name of jesus heal take it heal take it heal take it for you. Heal. Take it now. Heal. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Heal. Whatever it is, heal now. Lumps in the breast. Go, go, go. Lumps, go. Shaka, take a lot 
Go back and check yourself. Miracles are happening. Mama, heal in the name of Jesus. Shake it, heal, heal. Infections are getting healed. It doesn't matter who touches you. Ushers direct them, please. Ushers direct them. On you, return testimonies. Shake a Be healed right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Go. Be healed right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Shake up Miracles are happening. Miracles are happening. Take it now. Now. Miracles are happening. Mighty miracles are happening. What's wrong? Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Please, if if the miracle is for a child, before they get there, leave the child so that they don't jump the child. Please. Hallelujah. Continue. Praise. Heal right now. Take it. Heal. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Go back and check yourself. Take it now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Please, when they pray for you, go back to your seats. Shaba baba 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 baba. Shake a bush. I bring you healing now, now, now. Please move forward, move forward, move forward. Don't worry. We'll lay hands on everybody, everybody. Mommy, the Lord visits you right now. Leave her right now. Thou foul devil. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. I bring you healing now. Daddy be healed now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every sign of high blood pressure. Go. Something's moving. Something's changing. Be healed now. Please speak the last of time. Just a touch, just a touch. on you. It doesn't matter. Out. 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 Now. Come out of her. 
out of her. Shake it, take her. My prayer to God, so far. Come out, out of her right now. Fire upon you, every part of your body. Fire right now. Fire. Come out of her. Come out of her. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Please, this side you can go, Pastor James. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Healed right now. Be healed right now.
remember I spoke and I said the lady who ran out with the mental disorder, this is how she has returned. The Bible says he's confirmed the words of his messengers. Because the Lord brought her here. Before you shout that Nago day again, we're going to cast that devil of darkness. Look at me. This night, one last plague and Pharaoh will let you go. Hold my hands. Hold my hands with the other hand. Look at me. Say, I am not mad. Say it, I'm not mad. In the name of Jesus. Satan, you heard her. We overcome them by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. Right now, that devil of madness. Go! No more madness. Sanity. Restored. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead.
one last plague upon Pharaoh and upon the nation of Egypt. After that he shall let you go. We are going to pray for the request now and then I will speak over your life. Already mighty things are happening. Some of you will go back home and find testimonies waiting for you there. Hallelujah. Please everybody stand up. Pastor Williams, Pastor Jakes. Okay, he's still praying for them. Ah, okay. Please quickly, if you are yet to submit your prayer request, do that quickly. God answers prayers in this place. Pastor, sir. listen, please. While you are standing, I'd like you to stretch your hands towards the request. And begin to say, Lord, you know what I wrote there. You know what I wrote there. Some of you wrote things that are impossible. But you are saying, Lord, you know what I wrote. It's time for you to change my story. The answered prayer will be the proof. Shakata prakata kalabakata bra. Do the impossible. Do the impossible. Come on, pray. Lord, change stories. Thousands of requests all over the country all around the world my god 
change stories. Make sure you are praying. Lord, we lay hands. Lord, change stories. Change stories. My God, let the angel of the Lord pass. Pass. Let the angel of the Lord one more break. Let these testimonies come to order. Let this request change testimony. Request become testimonies. Become testimonies. Come on, say. Take, 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 take. Mark God, God, step in, oh God. One last play. Let's follow. Mighty things are happening in this place. Mighty things. Requests are becoming testimonies. God is visiting people. I can feel the fire on me. I know my own request. And I know God is answering it. I can feel the fire on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray right now. Ezekiah went to the temple and lifted up the threat letter to God. And when he did, God came through for them. And he said in 2 Chronicles 20, 20, he said, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lord God of Israel, now arise, O oh Lord, would you come to your resting place, you and the ark of your might, and let us rejoice as we close. In your righteousness, we celebrate your love. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray right now. There are thousands of people Miracles will be happening as I'm praying. 
Some of you is happening to your members at home. Father, miracles will break out right now. At the count of three, I just felt the anointing on me. One, two. Prayer requests are being answered supernaturally. Job, 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 job. A job is coming. I see it. Marriage is coming. I see it. Admission, admission. Jam, jam request. Wayek. Someone wants to get married before December. I see it. Financial breakthrough. Cancer for your mother. Cancer for your mother. Salvation of your family members. Mighty salvation. Some of them are in the beer parlor. The angel of the Lord is going after them. Father, you have made this place an altar of praise where you turn every weeping into mourning. This is no pretense, oh God. I speak right now. Let every prayer request here and for those streaming online, I change it to be testimonies now in the name of Jesus. I speak to you. I speak to you. Prayer request. And that which is dead will hear the voice of God. Become testimonies and be delivered for God's people. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give God thanks, it is done. Hallelujah. Now, listen. I always consider this part to be the greatest part of the miracle service. He sent forth his word. I'm about to prophesy right now. I feel like a mantle coming on my head. Please, everybody stand. Please, everybody stand. Believe in the Lord and you shall be established. Believe ye his prophets and you shall prosper. Please lift your hands, everybody. Please, as I speak, I want you to believe it. I want you to receive it. While I prayed, the Lord told me, if it does not happen, it's because you did not speak it. Things will change right now. As I speak, the angels of the Lord will begin to move to the areas that I'm speaking. All I need you to do is to shout a believing amen when you need to. Hallelujah. Every terminal disease represented in the life of anybody here or any family by the fire of the Holy Ghost right now it leaves your life and your family forever. Receive.
receive it. Infirmities are going. Infirmities are going. 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 Cancer go. Cancer go. HIV die. HIV die. SS change to AA. SS change to AA. AS change to AA. Every blood disease go go go. Every blood disease go now. Go now. Migraine headache go now. Go now. Fibroid go now. Go now. Peptic ulcer be gone right now. Be gone right now. HIV one and two in any body or family. I command you die now. Every infection in ladies and guys right now by the fire of the holy ghost be healed now every eye problem be gone now deafness in the ears go now any of your family members who is bedridden whether for stroke i'm seeing stroke and partial paralysis right now in the name of jesus i command them to arise from that bed every plague of death over any family he said and when i see the blood i will pass i pray any devil that has said you will not see 2014 and has said your family members will not see i cause that devil in the name of jesus hallelujah any kind of delay in this place marital delay or any kind of delay at the count of three yokes and crosses of delay be gone one two three go 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 hallelujah Hallelujah. Hear me. Hear me. Any altar of darkness. Hear me. I don't care where it's coming from. That is speaking against your life or the well-being of your family. Right now. That altar, wherever it is, it will catch fire now. Catch fire now. It will catch fire now. Shake it, it, it. Catch fire. Catch fire now. Every altar. Shake it, it. Every altar. Catch fire. Catch fire now. Every altar against any family. Catch fire now. hallelujah listen whoever has been marked for disfavor that they say things cannot work for you or your family members i remove that embargo of disfavor now 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 
Não! Não! Aleluia! Hear me! Whatever the devil has stolen from your family, whatever the devil has stolen in your life, I stand as a servant of God. This one is going to hit many people. There are many families that need restoration. I will shout restore at the count of three. We are hurrying up. We are out of time. Father, let the wind and the angel of restoration move across this place. One, two, three. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. I command restoration. I command restoration. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Restore. Restore. Hallelujah. Every yoke of academic failure, whether Wayek, whether Jam, some of you have not been able to enter the institution right now. I see fire. There are many of you, it's an embargo of darkness. You will feel like something jumping out of your head right now. I command yokes of academic failure be lifted now. Be lifted now. Be lifted now. Shake it, take it, take it. Be lifted now. Be lifted now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hear me. Some of you have struggled, hear me. Some of you are Christians, but you have struggled with habits, masturbation, pornography. It's not like you are bad. You have been trying and trying to stop. It's eating your life. Whether for you or for your loved ones, right now I pray. That embargo of darkness. Sin shall not have dominion. And I pray, whatever spirit that sponsors that kind of life leaves you now. 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 Anyone here looking for a job or your family members, they've tried, they've applied everywhere. My Bible says promotion comes neither from the east, nor the south, nor the west. I pray right now, let an anointing that will cause your destiny help us and that of your family members to locate you. May that anointing hit you now. Take it! Take it! I command miracle jobs! Miracle jobs! Miracle jobs! In the name of Jesus! Those of us who are in business, or your family members are in business, I pray right now, in the name that is above all names, the Bible says, it shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water, which yield its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever it doeth prospers. I pray right now. I command every business here. Grow in the name of Jesus. Grow in the name of Jesus. Expand in the name of Jesus. Increase in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now hear me. Whatever trouble is in your family. Some of you, your family is at the brink of divorce. Some of you, your father is not taking care of you. I don't care. Family problems, God is visiting them now. Every family problem. Because God marked this miracle service for families. Every problem. Satan is hiding behind the corner and joining the heads of people. Kototopa. At the count of three, be released. One, two, three. 
Families be free. Families be released. I command peace. I command prosperity. I command love. Every foul spirit responsible for the situation in families be lifted now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray those who have been destined to help you and take you to the next level of your life right now, wherever they are destiny help us I call you into the life of God's people wine pressers and bakers show forth come forth and he went to the tomb of Lazarus and Lazarus was dead four days and he called him forth right now whatever is dead in your life and your family I stand under this unction of God and I pray whatever is dead I command it right now let that which is dead hear the voice of the Lord come forth now come forth now whatever is dead come forth now hallelujah I release breakthrough into your life receive it all kinds of breakthroughs all kinds of breakthroughs you are well favored I pray for your spiritual life some of you your spiritual lives are zero no word life no prayer life tonight let a fire that not even you can quench fire prayer fire word fire take it take it receive it in the name of jesus a hunger for the things of the spirit take it take it take it a hunger to study the word to be obedient receive it in the name of Jesus hallelujah hear me the Bible says because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness therefore God even thy God has anointed you with an oil of gladness and the Bible says that oil puts you above your fellows I pray for you wherever you go from today let there be an anointing you cannot explain that will distinguish you let it distinguish you out of the crowd let it distinguish you receive it in the name of Jesus any member of your family that is not born again I pray By the permission of the Spirit of God, let the angels of God look for them and bring them into the faith now. No matter how hardened they are, we call them born again now. We establish it. Hallelujah. You will never be the same. Never be the same never ever be the same you will come back with testimonies that will make you afraid hallelujah now listen to me inside and outside please remain standing everybody many of you have come you have heard the word of the lord you have seen the wonders that god has done in our midst and i want to give you an opportunity right now to make a decision for jesus christ the bible says they that be wise shall be like the firmament of the heavens and they that turn many to righteousness as the brightness of the stars even forevermore i want to pray for you right now you have struggled jesus christ can give you rest both in this life and in the age to come some of you are outside scattered around hearing me from wherever even outside this building it's time to come to jesus some of you have given your heart to the lord but 
you just found out that you have derailed many cares have taken its place and right now you are tired and you are saying lord let this be the beginning of a new time i want you to leave your seat i'll just count four leave your seat and run out here inside and outside god is speaking to you one appreciate them koinonia they are coming no power can stop them don't wait for anybody you are the first person young and old two please run out leave your seat and come keep clapping what they have us tonight there are lots of people outside god is speaking to you three no matter what you have done god can give you a new beginning no matter what you have done stop struggling there are still people sitting keep coming keep coming koinonia keep appreciating them hallelujah now those remaining join us quickly make sure you join us quickly join us quickly don't let any devil stop you join us quickly hallelujah the bible says for god so loved you that he gave his one and only begotten son that if you will believe in him you will not perish but you will have an everlasting life. I salute you for this great decision. Everyone who is truly born again made this decision. Now I want you to lift both hands to the heavens and make this genuine decision. Don't be emotional about it. This is not a Bible recitation. This is a genuine decision that will begin your Christian experience. Never forget this day for the rest of your life. I'd like you to shout it very loud say after me lord jesus i am a sinner unable to help myself but this night i have heard your voice and i come to you save me help me i repent of my sins i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that from today i'm a new creation in christ i'm born again the spirit of god is at work in me my sins are forgiven i am a brand new man satan i denounce you and all your works from today i am a child of god forward ever backward never in the name of jesus christ now let me pray for you father preserve these ones in the name of jesus christ preserve them by the power of your holy spirit let their salvation be genuine preserve them in the mighty name of jesus christ i break the power of sin over your life i break you free from every weight and the sin that doth easily beset you in the name of jesus you are free i declare you saved by the word of god begin a new christian experience in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now congratulations i salute you we welcome you to the biggest family the biggest biggest family it's called the kingdom of heaven hallelujah now i'd like you to follow that lady who is lifting her hands the ushers will direct you who we'll have your informations and you'll be back hallelujah please go this way just follow the ushers appreciate them hallelujah hallelujah now very quickly if this is your first time inside and outside if this is your first time worshiping with us please leave your seat and come out here quickly i want to pray and prophesy over your life please no matter how far you are inside or outside leave your seat and come you must go with this final prophecy all first timers have a prophetic word that we release upon you thank you for coming those who invited them may good things keep locating your life forever in the name of jesus keep clapping koinonia they are coming hallelujah thank you so much for coming mommy thank you my mommy is here 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, please join us quickly. If you are coming from outside, join us quickly. This is the koinonia you've heard about. Hallelujah. God is doing mighty things in our midst. We are here every Friday. This was a special venue. Our regular venue is CGC. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Your life will never be the same. Never, never be the same. God will do more than you have bargained for. In the name of Jesus. We want to pray and prophesy upon your life. And I pray that the hand of God will come mightily upon you. Saints of God, stretch your hands as we prophesy. I speak over your life. You are blessed. You are blessed. We bless you with hunger for the things of the kingdom. We bless you with grace. We bless you. We bless you. Let everything work for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Return with testimonies. You will not need to tell men you came for koinonia. An anointing will go with you. What used to be a challenge for you, you will go back and find out that it's a mountain that has been crushed already. The Lord will go before you and grant you rest. In the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for coming. We love you from the depths of our hearts. Keep growing in the word of God. Hallelujah. I'd like you to follow the ushers. Just this way they will direct you. They will have your details and welcome you. We believe you have been blessed by this message. For additional information, you can visit us on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash koinonia. Eternity Network International or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash koinonia underscore ELI You can also download our messages on www.forshared.com Eternity Network International duplicating the fullness of God's life on earth Destiny, this night it must bow. Shut up, coach. shall come to pass in that day there is a rope tied around this lady's neck there is a rope let that rope be set on fire now 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 hallelujah we have to hurry up there's a lot for us to do Hallelujah. Lay your hands on her head. Out of her now. That foul devil of darkness. Go, go. On your mark said, go. Out. I see you in the spirit. Come out right now. Come out right now. Every chain. Yeah. Lay your hands on her ears. I'm seeing a snake. This is what I'm seeing a snake. Out! Out of her, that devil of darkness. Now! Now! Now, by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Come out! Come out right now! Out! 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 Come out! Come out right now! Out of her! By the fire of the Holy Ghost! Come out! Let her go out of her now. There's an army rising up. Fire upon you now. Fire upon you. Go, 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 go. Out. Out of her now, 
out now. There's no hiding. Out, out, out now. Out by the fire of the Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a very big fish like a whale. This is what I'm seeing. To break every chain, break every chain. Now, at the count of three, you are leaving this lady. Never to return. You know my voice. One, two, three, go. Go right now. Out of her. Out of her now. Lay your hands on her back. Out now. Now you're going by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Madam, please come. Can I talk to you? Yes. Where is your husband? You don't die. Do you, do you know why I asked you? The spirit of death is over your family. We must rebuke this. Who brought this woman? She's your mother. Eh? She's your mom. Let's start with you. Because you are not fine as you look wait now. Just let go. It's you I'm talking to. Forget about who you brought. Mama, things are tied down. Things are not working for you. You do business. What do you do? What does she do? Civil servant. Civil servant. What am I seeing with business? Secretary assistant. Uh -uh. I'm seeing, I'm not seeing, I'm seeing something that has to do with business. I'm just. My brother that does business. Okay, it's your brother that does business. Because I'm seeing everything tied down. We are going to break that yoke now. Huh? You, if we don't pray for you, you will have marriage problems. Out! Out! Now! Now! By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Come out of her. Come out of her right now. Out, out, out by the fire of the Holy Ghost. She's going to cough out something now. Take her outside. You believe that? I'm going to pray for you. Hold my hands, my dear. Thank you, Jesus. Let the yoke of bondage leave this family right now. I break that yoke. It's of darkness. There is no standing. The fire of the Holy Ghost is against you. Set you free. Mama, hold my hand. Weep not. Let him go now. Your reign over his life is over. And over his, the people in his family. You have stayed too long. Now. Go. Go. Let him go right now. You are living. In the mighty name of Jesus. This boy has suffered. This boy you are seeing. They have already finished this boy and his entire family. Look at him crying. But the Lord brings him hope to us. Hold my hands, Mama. Let me pray for you. Jesus, visit her. I take away this curse. This curse. Let the curse be broken right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Come. Please come.
look at me, look at me. Who brought her? What's wrong with her? Yes, because I'm seeing this is a chain on her neck. This is what I'm seeing. Eh? She has a mental disorder. Oh, she's mad. Wait now, calm down. Hold my hands. Since when? Hold my hands. Now, devil, I challenge you right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let this girl go now. 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 Mental spirit out of her right now. Lord is revealing something to me. It goes right now. Take her back to her seat and keep checking her. I'm seeing a woman. They diagnose you of fibroid. Please, let's hurry up. You came here. It's part of your prayer, your list. Not a young lady, a woman. We need to end it right now. We need to end it right now. A dark woman. You are putting her tie. Her tie. Her tie, her tie, her tie. Come. It would disappear now in this place right now. You believe that? Please put one hand on your stomach and hold. Thank you, Jesus. Fibroid, it's time to leave. Go right now. Leave this body right now and let her return with testimonies. Out of her now. You are a spirit of darkness. Your time has come. You are going out of this body right now. In the name of Jesus, I command the fiber to give way. In the name of Jesus, you are leaving her now. You are leaving her now. Your reign is over. Shake it. The fire of the Holy Ghost is against you. Lay your hands on her. Out now. You are going. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. Shekata pakata lakatosa. I see you in the spirit. There is no hiding place. The light of God exposes you and you are living. Now in the name of Jesus. Just keep your hands on her. Can a young man like this be so oppressed? Please lay your hands on him. Let me pray for him. Now, let him go. Now, the fire of the Holy Ghost is against you. There's no hiding. There's no hiding. Go, 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 go. See. Many of you, let me explain to you what is happening. It is not about the people. Some of them is the families that they represent. This is the whole family being set free. It's not even about the person. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord is ministering to me. I'm seeing a fracture. I'm seeing a fracture. Fracture. Somebody with a, is it a fracture. Something about legs. What happened to you? I had an accident. You had an accident. How long? July, it's July. 
and from then you've not been able to walk. They operated you, yes. but it didn't heal. Mm -hmm. This is demonic. Huh? It's the accident that would have killed you. This thing would have healed. They told you after a while, everything will be, it's supposed to be healed now. What's that? Your femur. Your femur. Okay. This one down. Okay. I'm going to pray for you. Did they, did they try to work on it for you? And it has, you cannot work without this thing. Completely. Do you believe the Lord Jesus will heal you? With all your heart. This is why you came, right? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Lift it up. Lift it up. Father, in the name of Jesus, look at me. I bring you the life of the kingdom that I represent. Bones be joined to bones. Right now. Your recovery starts now. You're feeling the power of the Holy Ghost. Go through your body. Hold him. The Lord is doing a mighty work. See, he's feeling the fire of God. You're feeling the fire of God. Your recovery starts from today. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Over the next few weeks, weeks literally, it will be but as a sign, you'll be able to walk right now without this. Just leave him. Here. Please clear this pathway. Brother, look at me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, look at me. Lift your leg. Start lifting your leg. Go ahead. Okay, try moving it. Any relief? Are you feeling? Yes, relief. Walk by yourself. Walk by yourself. Come. Look at this. Look at this. Turn around. Turn around and come. That devil is a liar. Your miracle has started. Could you do this before? Could you do this before? Look at this. Come on, give Jesus a big shout of praise. Look at, look at, look at, look at. See the miracle that is happening to his leg. Look at this, look at this. Look at this. He could not do this. Look at, look at. He's lifting the legs. Are you seeing? Watch a miracle happen. Watch a miracle happen. Jesus, we give you praise. Jesus, we give you praise. Look at, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Let's walk again. One more time. Let's walk as fast as you can. Could you do this before? The fracture is joining back. Joining back. Turn around. As it has begun, it will be perfected. Give Jesus a big shout of praise. Look back to your seat. mighty miracle has happened here someone your hand is bent is bent check it now check it you could not bend it please god just showed me it will surprise you run out right now it's a big miracle somebody's hand you could not bend it very well the lord is straightening it right now right now right now right now right now right now the lord is straightening it right now look at this what couldn't you do you could not lift it before. You could not lift it. He couldn't lift it because he was born deformed. Look at what God is doing. Now put it down and lift it up. Put it down and lift it up. Look, see, see the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at the power of the Holy You know this is dead. Look at what is happening to him. Look at this. Can you see his hands shaking? Look at this. Look at what God is doing. Look at what the Holy Ghost is doing. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Come. Look at me. Now in the name of Jesus, look at me. Lift it up and bring it down. Look at this. Bring it down. Lift it up again. Look at this. Give Jesus a big, big, big.
big clap of praise. God bless you. What's wrong with her? Please, if I don't announce the case, don't bring them. What's who is who brought her? Fracture. Where? Since how long? And you could not walk. You can't walk now. You can't walk. Okay. I'm going to pray for you. Just put, just put it down. Put it down. We are going to pray that over the next few weeks, it will begin to bend back into shape. You believe that? What could you not do before with it? What can she not do? Father, within the shortest possible time, let this leg bend back to order. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Hallelujah. Peptic ulcer. It's time to wave bye bye to it. Lift up your hands. Peptic ulcer. We are going to start ministering now. Instant miracles will begin to happen. Pastor Jax is here. We'll verify them and have some. Ah, Daddy. Can I talk to you, sir? I'm seeing stroke. This is what the Lord is showing me. The devil wants to bring stroke from here. I'm seeing it completely paralyzed. This is what the Lord is showing me that the devil wants to bring. You believe me? Can I pray for you? Please hold my hands. That devil of stroke. Let him go right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. That stroke will not come. We command that you are free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. God is visiting your family. Not just you. Your family. Hold my hands. Both of them. Look at me. Can you shout? Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Peptic ulcer. Lift your hands. Please listen. We are going to start praying right now. Instant miracles will start happening. Hallelujah. Where are your family members? Please come. Mama, where is your first son? Don't point the picture. I, I'm seeing. I mean, where is he? What is he doing? Nothing is moving in this family. We must break the hands of that. Huh? Who has a child in your family? My third boy. He fell a, a child. I'm seeing a child. Uh, third boy, my immediate elder sister. We're going to pray. Because, okay, this is the child. You see, give God praise. See the baby. This is the baby. Madam. My second born is having mental. He's having a mental. Outside where? The person has run away. Eh? Just leave them. She's outside. Where is outside? You don't know where she is. I call her back to this auditorium right now. Wherever she is, I declare right now. Whatever spirit has taken her out of this place, she returns now in the name of Jesus. Wherever she is, she returns now back to this place. I'm going to pray for you, ma. Things will change in a dramatic way in your family. You believe that? Visit mama. 
the name of Jesus Christ, I bring you a visitation from God together with all the members of your family. I lay my hands. Every terminal disease in your family goes right now. Who is this? I'm going to pray for you. Hold my hands. The power of God will come upon you. Captivity ends. Now! Out! Let this lady go free now. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now in the name of Jesus. I curse that devil of infirmity. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be free. Be free right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Peptic ulcer. Peptic ulcer. Lift your hands please. Now I'm going to pray for you. Pastor Jake sir. Um, well, where do we do it now? Okay, maybe we'll create. Once we begin to minister, as the Lord touches you, check yourself. We want to take some testimonies. Okay, this side. This side. Pastor Jakes will be there. Pastor Williams too is there. Please, we we'll only announce verified miracles. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now lift your hands. All, sir, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at me. The fire of God is coming upon you, Dora. Right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take it now. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Please. Any miracle right now. Pastor Williams and Pastor Jakes are there to verify it. I command ulcer. Some of you will feel like fire. Just shoot from your chest. That's the end of it. Ulcer, be healed now. This lady has ulcer. God is healing her. This lady has ulcer. Follow me, instrumentalist. Hallelujah. At the count of three, ulcer, be healed. One, two, three. Be healed right now. 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 Every trace of ulcer. Now check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. You have a miracle. Just move straight. We'll take some testimonies now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now. The Lord is showing me someone. You are from a polygamous home. Please listen. A polygamous home. Things have been going really bad in your home. In fact, two of your mothers, as in there is a serious fight going on. It's a polygamous home. God wants there is a lot of witchcraft activities going. Who is that person? Come. Look at me. Just look at me. Look at my eyes. Just look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I command you to look at me now. I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to the spirit. You don't know what I'm seeing in the spirit. At the count of three, that plague of hatred is going. All of you hold your hands together. As soon as I count three, button her shirt. A female usher. As soon as I count three, the fire of God will come upon some of you. This family thing will end right now. Are you hearing me? Lift your hands, all of you. I tell you to be a mighty fire. Just at the count of three. One. Two, three, shake it, take 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 it, take
Jesus. Seca prosco prega de baixo. Seca te 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 te. Reke te 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 te. La pa ka pa ka ta ba ka te te ta ba la la ba. I set you free right now from altars of darkness. Be free right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. They call a woman Mama Embu. Mama Embu. I'm hearing the Holy Spirit ministering to me. It's somebody's relative. Mama Embu. Who is Mama Embu? You? Mama Embu, come. Do you? Where are the Embu? Your name is Mama Embu. How can God give a name in a play, Mama Embu? These are the Embu. Give Jesus praise. Look at. Please, somebody, can you collect the children? These children are sick. I see a plague of darkness upon their lives. He's crying. Sorry, oh boy. Are you seeing all these swellings on this child? This child, what you think is a skin infection, but this is a demonic thing. Huh? We must deal with it. Father, you reveal this. Do you know this is a worm? Do you know this is a worm? This, these are worms around the body of the child. That's what they will tell you is this and that and that, but we're going to pray for the child now. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We bring life and perfection to this baby. Life in the name of Jesus Christ. Life. Boy, we bring life to you in the name of Jesus. Madam, hold my hands. Look at me. The struggle is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. The struggle is over. Right now. Let it rain. Let it rain. Ah. Hold my hands. Let her go. 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 Out. Leave the family. One more plague and Pharaoh will let you go. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Go. You will be a woman of prayer from today. Praying in tongues for hours. Mama, I will pray for you. God will turn around any captivity in the name of Jesus. Out of her. Leave her. Right now. Come out of her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look, many things are happening here. Don't wait on... Okay, there are a few testimonies. Hallelujah. This lady came in here with Pepsi Oxa. Yes, when I came in today, whenever I'm feeling stomach ache, it's like there are pins between my intestines. But today, when he mentioned Pepsi Oxa, I was healed. Because when I came in, I was actually holding my tummy together like this. Anyone has to close to me outside, close to the gate, wouldn't have noticed it if you check clearly. But now, so the pains are gone, yeah. completely gone. If you press it, no pains. Please come, please come. Ensure press, press her stomach very well. Any pain? No. Please put your hands together for the Lord. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Celebrate Jesus. Come on, just give Jesus a big, big clap of praise. Okay, wow, I hear that there's a hot testimony coming here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to pray. Okay. See, when you see me flow the way I do, I move only as God directs. Are you following me now? If you move by yourself, you do something and you won't get any result. Now, the Lord is ministering to me. The Lord is going to address the issues of marriage right now. Please stand up. Please rise up. 
There is an amazing miracle here. Give God praise. Pastor Jax is coming. Somebody, a mighty, mighty deliverance here. I tell you, the devil is in trouble over your destiny this night. Please shout a big hallelujah. My God. Wow, a lot of you will not understand what happened to this lady. She said one of the nights she had a dream, a man was pressing her and forcing her to eat. Are you following? Was pressing her, forcing her to eat. And since when apostle began to minister and began to speak over her life and command deliverance, she began to cough out things like rope. Are you following? She was feeling rope all over her voice. And right now, what's happening to you? I'm relieved. I'm feeling relieved. Are you just looking like that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. I don't care what it is. It will go. I don't care what it is. Hear me. It will go this night. Hallelujah. The Bible says, For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. Not for a man of God to be a superstar. There's no time for that. He said to destroy the works. To destroy the works. Hallelujah. Marriage is a blessing. Can you hear me inside and outside? What did I say? Marriage is a blessing. The Bible says, therefore, for this cause, shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and they too shall become one flesh but the devil has orchestrated it such that there are yokes of marital delays over families but right now i said right now he said one more plague and pharaoh will let you go lift your hands lift your hands I'm going to count three. Every spirit that is responsible. Some of you have people come in the night to molest you in your sleep, to sleep with you. At the count of three, I like you to shout, I am free. There will be mighty marital deliverances according to the word of the Lord. It will hit many of you, especially ladies. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Shaka tatate. Shaka tatate. Be free. Be free. Be free. Marital delay. I curse you. That spirit responsible for marital delay i open up your marital destiny now in the name of jesus i open up your marital destiny by the fire of the holy ghost i release you shake it fire is burning in this place shake it make god to soto tete make break it Yokes of marital delay. Yokes of marital delay is over. Over. Hallelujah. Hear me. Every one person who is supposed to be married happily with dignity and your life partner has not come up men keep coming some of you is married men some of you you just get all kinds of irresponsible men they will just come as if they are thieves into your life to steal and kill and destroy there are some of us you are brothers you are responsible people right now i pray every close marital door standing for your family standing for your children every close marital door right now be open in the name of jesus 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 fire fire 
fire is falling fire is forcing doors to open up fire is forcing doors shake 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 je prekete me koto prekete she ma protos koze rakata kete bele koto e preke sekete shekete tetetetetetetete mam prekete kete ka Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing two women. Your major prayer point was fruit of the womb. Please come out here. Fruit of the womb. Celebrate them as they come. The Lord who located you. The Lord who located you. I want you to come rejoicing. Nine months you will come back with your child. Hallelujah. Come Selina. There was a story. Let me share this to encourage you. Hallelujah. Praise God. A woman was barren for how many years? 8 years. 8 years. She was barren for 8 years. She didn't even come. It was a prayer request. Are you following me now? We prayed on it and God gave her how many children? Triplets. God gave her triplets. One, two, three. For the eight years, God gave her triplets. They are all alive. They are healthy. They brought the cups and the tray of the dedication for me. I just called her as a witness because she's a witness. Let me tell you something. The Bible says children are a heritage from the Lord. I don't care what spell. I don't care what the hospital is saying. Even if they say there is no womb, that's nonsense. The Bible says, "Who shall decree a thing, and it shall come to pass when the Lord has not declared it?" Hallelujah! I'm going to pray, mommy. You will see the hand of God. Whatever has taken the place of that baby in your womb, it will give way. you will return back with testimonies there's fire burning my hands and the lord instructs me to lay my hands on you please lay your hands on your stomach as i lay my hands on you the fire of god will burn off that nonsense hallelujah and as i pray for them a point of contact to many of you who know some people they have tried they have prayed nothing is working We have come to call that devil a liar tonight. Are you hearing me? Now in the name of Jesus. Womb be open. Right now. Womb be open. Now. Mommy return with your child. Return with your miracle baby. Baby girl, baby girl, look at me madam. You are returning with a baby girl. The name of Jesus Christ. What the doctor said, God is changing it. Within now and the next two weeks, you will pass out all kinds of substances you will take in and you will give birth. Let her go. Out. Now. Out. This is I'm seeing a spirit holding her womb. Release her now. Now. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Shake it, 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 it. Madam, let your womb be open. Return with your miracle children. Who again? If you are standing for somebody, just miracle babies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Miracle babies, return with your testimonies. Hallelujah, Madam, go and return with testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a family that has been trying to build a house. It has reached lintel level, but nothing more again. This has been for years. Who is that? The Lord is showing me something. Please. Come. Look at me. Look at me. Wait. Uh -uh. I will know if you are the one. All of you look at me. 
the power of God will come upon one person. That is the person. But I'm going to pray for you for coming out. No problem. Don't worry. Even if you are seated, I just want to minister directly. All of you look at me. Lord, you gave me a sign. Right now, whoever that person is, let the fire of God come in a mighty way. Now! I use the remaining part of you as a point of contact. Every demonic thing keeping that building, as I lay my hands on you, I tell you finance will come from everywhere. Shake it, take it. Maka proto kote brasha, mate kretos kopre, reke teke te, leke proso prosh, reka tabadi kapos, ma preke telekos, mam protos kopre kete, koshata lakata preke de balarabash, rakata preke te, building projects, building projects, God is visiting in the name of Jesus, supernatural testimonies, some of you before the end of the year. Before the end of the year, the hand of the Lord will bring resources. Come, madam. You came out for building, but what God is going to do is more than building. You are a very good woman. Hold on. Where is your child? They are at home. Three things the Lord is going to do before now and the end of the year. Wait, madam. Let me tell you first. Number one, there will be radical financial shift in your family I've not even touched financial issues number two number two this is what is going to happen what do you do what do you do yo? I'm a teacher you are a teacher I see a lot of favor I see you this woman is a very good woman very good she say amen a very good woman you can know you are good some of you are bad. She knows she's good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You have a daughter. You have a daughter. What's her name? Joy. Joy. The Lord says, I should tell you, it's time for her to leave her name in the family. I don't know her name. That's why God said, I should, I should ask you of her name. Joy. Madam, you will come back and you will testify. It's a mighty visitation. Lord, confirm your word with signs. Did I pray for you? You are a businessman. You do not even know. But you are a major businessman. Come. You have not started anything. You don't know anything. Go and read. Let me tell you, my brother. What do you do? You are, a you are going to do business in a mighty way. And God is going to prosper you in a very mighty way. Please follow me. We have not touched the area of finance. We will come. Because there are many families here. This is an issue. We will address that. But for now, let me just pray for you for what you came for. Let mama go free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Did I pray for you? Deliverance comes now. Deliverance comes now. You will let her go. Your body is afflicted. Deliverance comes now. Shake it up, kata baladaba. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, deliverance comes now. Come. Look at me. Button the other shirt. You need to be serious with God. Huh? You are young, but you are not serious with God. But God loves you. Huh? When it's time for altar call, just run and come and stand. Okay? God loves you and he wants to use you. Wow. Sister, that fair lady, please run and come quickly. The yoke of delay is ending in your family. See, look at me. You don't know why I'm saying you should run. Don't do woman, woman. I'm saying run. These are instructions. You understand? Please go back and run out. Don't be embarrassed. God spoke to me. I'm not doing foolish things. Come. Don't worry, I'll hold you so that you don't hit me. Hold my hands. Hold my hands with both of your hands. I saw a measuring tape, and the Lord says it is the time for favor. Are you following me? 
Lord, confirm your word right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, your family will come with rejoicing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please bring out your prayer request. Start passing it out while we address. Now, if you are sick in your body, please hear me. Any kind of sickness, it's time for you to come out right now. Come out and line up here for healing. Any kind of sickness, please come and line up here for healing. While they do that, ushers, everybody pass your prayer request to the last person by the side. Outside, please. Please don't miss it. God answers prayers here. Look at how many people are coming for sickness. You see how the devil is a, is a, is a, is a liar. Welfare. Can I get a cup of water, please? So I can drink. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.